Meanwhile, organizers of the planned nationwide protest have started writing the Commissioner of Police and stakeholders in different states across the country seeking um, for venue and police protection. One of such group is Taking Back Movement, FCT, wrote to the Minister of the FCT, Yesomwiki, requesting venue for the protest. Another group, Active Citizens Group, wrote to the Commissioner of Police in Lagos, notifying the command of a planned peaceful protest and requesting for security. The Lagos Police Command has acknowledged receiving a letter for a protest in the state, confirming this to TVC News. The Commissioner of Police, Adeko Kefayo Ade, said the command has also asked those who sent the letter to come forward for a meeting to discuss the modalities for a peaceful protest in line with the Constitution. Now, for more update, a security expert, Tony Foyeton, joins me on the news. Good to have you join us. Good evening, and thank you for having me. So we've seen um, different briefing coming from the police, whether at the federal level or the state level. I just want to first start by asking you, um, in situations like this, what are the rules of engagement from security, or, you know, for security agencies? Uh, I think one of the uh, fundamental issues is, um, to the extent that them, um, uh, ascertaining the fact that, of course, them. Um, a protest is um, it's something that is a fundamental right. To the extent that it does not um, lead to violence, that's expression, uh, freedom of expression. Uh, you want to express yourself about certain grievances about government and government policies and the like. There are different platforms through which you can express such, and protest is one of such. Uh, the, the challenge in most cases is that of the implication and the, the end result of such protest. Uh, now we start with the idea that it's going to be a peaceful process, uh, but at the end of the day, we also discover that most of the time, uh, there are always pockets of violence that are attached to it. Now the causation is now another thing entirely. So now, if we, if the security agencies have been able to identify the fact now they're coming to seek um, the indulgence of the police for police protection, uh, so what we expect them to do is to seek to what extent rightly it can be executed without the necessary attachment of violence. So that means that uh, constitutionally they are entitled to protest, and constitutionally the police is also has the responsibility of maintaining the peace. So there must be a middle point. Uh, the protesters must not be headlong as to do it. This is the way we want to do it, and that is the way it should be. And the police also should not be so dogged to the extent of saying that uh, you cannot do it, and we say you cannot do it, and that is final. Because at the end of the day, if both parties are holding financial credit to their view, now there will be a vacuum, and that vacuum is what that violence will now exploit. And that is one area that we think that uh, there should be a balance. Now the police are saying that, okay, the organizers should come and let them, uh, let them dialogue and have um, a good understanding as to uh, how the process will go peacefully and all those stuff like that. Now the question is um, whether that is the rule, whether that is the procedure is also another issue. Because if you see people that say that we want to protest and they are giving you a formal letter uh, to inform you that uh, we want to protest on X and Z day, uh, what we expect is that the police should be able to put machinery in motion to ensure that there uh, there's peaceful process. The major challenge is always the miscreants are coming in at the end of the day to cause mayhem. So if, if, if there's a way that it can be balanced, then of course it will make a lot of sense. Now, uh, it is not... Mr. Foyeton, if, if, if I may come in, just a yes. moment, Mr. Foyeton, because we've seen 